It's going to be fun. So the camera's live, so hold on. Because I've got to do a couple things. Hello there, and welcome to the Dr. Elisa Show here on KUHS Denver the Stream. I hope you are comfy and listening somewhere where you can perhaps even close your eyes and take in this show. Today I have an amazing guest who I'll introduce in, in just a couple moments. And I'm, as always, checking my technology and making sure I did everything right. So welcome, KUHS Denver The Stream, The Dr. Lisa Show, I have an amazing guest. And before that, let me remind you that the point of this show is to ignite a renaissance spirit within you. And there are so many ways to define that and so many ways for you to embrace your true soul's journey. And number two. Top and yeah. bottom, top and bottom. Not three? Maybe down, not three. You're not on three. Down, there? You're not on three. Oh, I'm not on three. Okay, messing with technology. That, hopefully I got straight. I think I got it now. Um, so, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> hopefully I got this right now. Um, so, yeah, the, what's the show about? Igniting a renaissance of spirit within you. The work I do with people is helping them find their soul's craving and to embrace it and live it. And the show just offers you insights, little pieces of the way other people have inspired me, ignited something in me, and that I hope they do the same for you. I am live here. I'm also live on Facebook, The Dr. Lisa Show. You can also watch on Twitter. I want to do a couple shout outs. To begin with, I want to do a shout out for the MS Society. I am fundraising for them. Um, they're an amazing organization, and you probably know somebody with MS, and you just don't know that you know them. I will be in two weeks doing a show on philanthropy and MS, so think about tuning in for that one also. Also, a shout out for um, Connect for Health Colorado. They are offering more savings to more people than ever before on health insurance with costs with plans at low or no cost. You can call them at 855-752-6749. I want to shout out for them that a good place, a good resource. Okay, um, and the thing I always tell you, I want us by the end of the year to all be philanthropists, and you could donate a dollar a week and change the course of somebody's life, of an organization. It may not sound like much money, but it is. Okay, um, I want to get on with my guest. Before I do that, I'm going to introduce her a little bit differently. To begin with, you know that I bring, like I said, people who inspire me. And her, she, this is a woman who um, is a bit edgy and a bit romantic. So let me start this introduction by reading you one of her poems. I don't want small talk or a soul who sits at the surface. Take me to the middle of a novel full of dark romance and night gardens scented in Dracula orchids. Let's talk about how we knew each other under full moons of another life and secrets of Salem. Let your soul out to dance with mine. If you haven't heard of this woman before, you're about to. She's about to publish a book of poetry. This is Anne-Marie Eliezer. And as you can see, she writes darkly romantic edgy gothic poetry that speaks to women and maybe men who are a little more impressed with Morticia Adams than Cinderella know that they have a beautiful inner darkness and have a secret love for Edgar Allan Poe. Anne-Marie, welcome to the show. Hi there, Alyssa. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to, to, to talk to you today. Um, so here, here's what I want from you is I kind of want your story. You found 
this life inspiration, right? I talk about igniting a renaissance of spirit mm -hmm. by writing this hauntingly romantic poetry and, and your work ignites something in me. So I'm wondering, could you share your, your journey from, because for whatever, from, no, I don't write poetry to, to oh my gosh poetry? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I started, um, it all began in 2015. Mm -hmm. I, I've always had a love of words and books and poetry, and I started She's Magic and Midnight Lace mm -hmm. on Facebook. And it was really an effort at that time. It was just something for me, um, a little escape to share beautiful words and to share art. And I really became inspired, um, not only by modern day poets, but poets of the past. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, I found myself looking and searching for more in these poems. And I thought, well, if I can't find it, then I'm going to create it. So in 2017, I just started writing. And once I did, it didn't stop. The words just kept coming. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, through an amazing writing community and with a lot of support um, and amazing follower base, I was able to grow my page and really get my writing out there on a number of social media platforms. And I just absolutely love it. It's such a passion of mine um, that I really, honestly, never knew I had until I started writing. So this is, um, what fascinates me about some of your poetry is it is a, a mixture of fairy tale and passion, and almost as if you, you know, that Grimm's fairy tale isn't Disney's fairy tale, right? They're all a little dark, and you seem to, to, to blend that with a, an intimate kind of, of passion. Um, I want to read another one, if that's okay. Sure, yes. <laughs> Her tea parties are brimming with mad hatters, misfits, and mayhem. Give me a little whiskey and lunacy, darling, and I'll show you the way to Wonderland. Where does that, so I, I guess, I mean, this is amazing poem for someone who adores Alice in Wonderland and that dark part, and you said you didn't realize you had this till you started writing. Do, where, what have you learned about yourself with this writing? Like, where does this live in you? And I don't know, is that a clear question? Does that make sense? It is. It, yes. This lives deep within me. I I've was fascinated with the Wicked Witch. I was fascinated with Maleficent, and I had no desire <laughs> to be the princess. Right. <laughs> right. And so this just comes from a very deep place, um, very personal place. So it, it's fascinating because I grew up knowing that no mermaid would actually have um, given up her voice to be with the prince and nicely let him marry someone else. And like the Disney fairy tales were not exactly how these things went. And wondering why women always had to get rescued. Right? So there was always that that within me too, right? Something similar. But I'm wondering if you find that um, more people, women particularly, are inspired by but have they told you that, that you're awakening something in them? They have. I've gotten some amazing feedback, amazing comments from writer. Um, I'm sorry, from my followers. Uh -huh. And, you know, I just had a recent one that brought me to tears. It was probably the most touching response to my writing I've ever received. So share it. Her, so her soulmate used to share my writings with her. It was a very intimate thing between them. Wow. 
and he since has passed on and yet she still finds comfort in my words because they remind her of him and that was so touching because you never I never realized how I my writing affects people um, until they they let me know and I've been reached you know they followers have reached out to me mm -hmm. telling me that they've gotten my writing has gotten them through a death in the family or just you know your writing is amazing it touches me it speaks to me mm -hmm. and no amount of, you know, I think especially in the social media world, we all strive for the likes and the um, the number of followers we have, but that doesn't compare to the personal responses that I get and to how, you know, this, how my writing affects people. I, I, can, I can relate in that one of the things I love about your poetry is that the woman is always in a position of strength. And, yes. And that, and not, and it's darkly romantic. And so I think it speaks to so many women, and, and probably men, and probably people who are non-binary, I mean, lots and lots of people, of yeah. ways of finding their own inner sensuality. Um, yes. Inner, not just the idea, Yes, because it's it's more sensual than sexual, and I'm wondering is that the response you get from people? Is that how you view your poetry? Well, I do, and I it's it's that sensuality and my darkness that comes through from a place of deep within that I think for so long, not just women, mm -hmm. but for so long, um, we've been taught where many of us have been taught that, you know, you don't talk about your darknesses or your sensuality, that you somehow have to keep that hidden. I mean, and just, and I will go right back to the example of the fairy tale. It was always very good. It was always so good. And that the dark queens and the wicked witches, I mean, yes, in those tales that they portrayed were evil and did wrong. However, mm -hmm. And the, in the later versions, you understood where Maleficent was coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, you understood where Corella Deville was coming from in this latest movie. You understand that, um, you know, yeah. just for so for so long, I think we we've been taught to hide those things, to bury those things. And um, I, no, I don't think we should. It's fascinating to me. I want to just follow that line a little bit. Um, the, mu the, the musical Wicked does the same thing. Right? It gives right. you this other point of view. And one Absolutely. of the reasons I think it's important, I, I'm reading a book that doesn't sound related. It's called The Coddling of the American Mind. But they talk in there about how Americans, specifically, but lots of other people, have turned the world into us versus them, good versus evil. And, and we see that theme over and over and over. And yet, sometimes what we see as evil is simply somebody else's perspective. Obviously, there's evil in the world. I mean, obviously, there is true evil. But sometimes, we're so wrapped up in our perspective that we don't understand the other perspective. And I, I think your poetry gives us a place to go with that, right? Like, Right. Like it's okay for me to say that I'm an incredibly sensuous, sensual woman, and I don't want to hide that, right? So, exactly. it, has it given you permission to your poetry to show up differently in the world? Absolutely. Can you talk about that? It absolutely has. Okay. Uh, my my poetry in getting these words out has helped me in my personal life immensely. It's given me a voice in, in situations that I needed to have a voice. It's gotten me out of situations that I needed to get out of, and it's brought me strength. And that was because it started, it simmered in a place of darkness. I was going through a very difficult time in my personal life when I started writing. Mm -hmm. And it was those circumstances 
and the darkness within my own that pulled me out of that and pushed me forward and like I said when once I started writing and the words came out they didn't stop I knew at that moment that I had had this just buried inside me and it was going to come out and I was going to let it out and so um, yes it, it definitely has my writing has it changed me in many ways for, for the positive for the good so would you say if I keep like I just want to dig in a little more there that writing this has helped you speak up in your career perhaps or change who you are in relationships it's changed who I am in relationships uh -huh. it's just it's it's freed me from so many things. It's also helped me deal with things that I was dealing with most of my life. Mm -hmm. Maybe some traumas or, you know, how I approached relationships with, without getting into detail, with certain family members or what I went through or what I'm still going through. Just giving me that voice. It's power. It's strength. And now that I have it, and now that it's out there, <laughs> it's not going away. I mean, it's not going away. <laughs> okay, I want to read another poem, all right? Um, and then I'd love it if you read one. Like, find one of your okay. favorites. I'm going to read this one, okay. and then I want to hear what it sounds like when you read it, okay? Okay. Um, women are magical creatures, with kisses bearing both stars and storms, and voices colorful enough to put crying babies to sleep while scaring grown men to death. Yes. <laughs> I think that's so true, right? Um, yes, we're we amazing. We are amazing creatures. Mm -hmm. We are we are maternal. We give birth. We 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 step up in so many so many areas, and um, and most times we're expected to. Um, but yes, absolutely, we have the. We carry the same voice to soothe our babies as we do to scare grown men. <laughs> so if you just tuned in, this is the Dr. Lisa Show on KUHS Denver, the stream. And, oh my gosh, you got it. You, I'm so glad you joined us. I am talking with Anne-Marie Eliezer, the author of an up-and-coming book, right, that is also called Magic in Midnight Lace. And it is a... So Go ahead. It's an upcoming book. Yep, it's called. It's going to be called She's Magic in Midnight Lace. Okay. It's going to be released in early November. Mm -hmm. It's going to be published by a very um, good friend of mine, um, Jay Wong, um, and 300 South um, Media Group, mm -hmm. South Media Publishing, and um, yes, I'm so excited. This is, and your po so again, if you're joining us, this is, she's this amazing poet. Um, do you have a favorite poem? I'd love to hear you read one or two of your poems. How does it sound like okay. coming from you? <laughs> okay, so this poem right here, well, I'm gonna read it. Uh, okay. this, it's called, it's titled Maleficent Girls. Okay. This is one of the very first poems I ever wrote. And it's Maleficent Girls, and it's the ones born with fairy blood who dance with their darkness and roam quiet places conversing with crows and clouds. And this poem is probably single-handedly been shared the most and gotten the most response out of any other poem I've ever written. Why do you think that is? Because I think that women, I, girls, and young girls, young ladies, women identify with with the fact that we do. We there are those of us who dance with our darkness, and we like to roam those quiet places, conversing with things such as the crows and the clouds. I, so here's one of the things I, I love, and I wonder if this has is something you've thought about. So much of, and I'm not criticizing anything here, but so much of 
sort of spiritual advice and spiritual language around women, which is beautiful, is, you know, you're full of light and you're full of love and you're full of, you know, and it's a very light energy. Right. And, um, and it's lovely and beautiful and thank you people who spread that and share that and teach that. And mm -hmm. then there's like Morticia Adams in here. <laughs> and then there's the, right, there, there's that other side. And I, I wonder if, if you see yourself as the darkness that shares the light and that dance with the light, like, I, I don't have a clear question, but have you thought about that? I have. I have, and you know, I'm, um, I'm a very spiritual person, mm -hmm. but I believe, but I, I'm, but I'm fascinated with the dark side, and I don't believe that the darker things mm -hmm. are always the bad things, as we've been led believe you know and when I talk about dark clouds and rainy days and ravens and crows those sort of things have always just brought me comfort and I don't think that those are a bad thing so, not at all so it's, it's fascinating um, because the book that I'm trying to get out hopefully um, it, probably September by the time it comes out is about women who become the dark and they are it, it, and it explores the dark as a way that the light can shine and that without, I mean, we don't see stars during the day because they, the sky is bright, but they're there. Right. The stars are there. It has, right. the darker it is, the more stars you see. So there right. is a dance between dark and light and so much of the way fairy tales have been writ written and women have often portrayed themselves, right, and, and been portrayed is just with the light and right. the sometimes for some of us our strength is in the dark now um if you're listening to this and you just have to say something i can tell you that you can go to the dr elisa show on facebook i have the page up we're streaming live and you can chat you can put a comment in there um so so not is there another poem can you read another poem for us Yes. Let me know. Okay. So here's here's one. Okay. A lot of a lot of my poems sometimes you'll see is like part this, part that, sometimes this, sometimes that. Okay. The you know split down the middle. Mm -hmm. So my antique teacup is but half full of Pandora's curses and nestling madness part weeping willow, part wicked witch. My soul settled upon a dark enchanting castle above the cold sea, while my heart tugs for seeping howling things. So it's a dance. Your poetry it's is a about a dance, right? Because sometimes I am the weeping willow. I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm the soft, and, weeping and, willow, and yeah. sometimes I can be the wicked witch, and <laughs> I don't think that there's anything. And when I say wicked witch, that means I'm not talking in literal terms of a wicked witch. I right. and I, I think people understand that that those th those maybe harsher days or you know, when we're going through something and sometimes those feelings we feel like we have to repress and put them down and put them away because society doesn't want to hear that or, you know, um, you know, women, we shouldn't be acting that way. And mm -hmm. um, no, no, absolutely not. I think that we have to just embrace every part of us. I think the more that we embrace those parts of us, the more we shine. So it is in that dance of darkness and lightness that yeah. that, that that we shine. Um, you've clearly moved people. I wonder now that you now that you you found this voice. I'm I'm wondering, like a message, like how what do you want women to know? I mean, clearly, and men, and everybody on the spectrum, right? But 
you found your voice not by journaling, though it's a kind of journaling, not by standing up and stamping your feet, not by, you know, forcing yourself into something. You know, many of us have struggled to find our voice. This is a fascinating way to find your voice, to write your inner darkness in poetry. And what, do you have some advice for women who are struggling to find their voice? When I started writing, it was from a very personal, deep, quiet place. From my heart, my soul, my intuition. And that's all, you know, I know it sounds cliche, but that's where it needs to come from. Mm -hmm. If you sit with yourself, and like I said, when, when I started this, I was going through a lot. And I just sat with myself and listen to myself. What did I need? What did I want? And that's when the answer came to me and the words came to me. You just have to listen. You have to listen to what's inside of you. Not what anybody else has to say, but what's inside of you. Because I had not in, in these are from people who should have been supporting me or I should say one person who should have been supporting me the most mm -hmm. who turned my writing into something very ugly and said it was dark and demonic and I didn't listen because I knew where that person was coming from I just I, I knew, I, I listened to myself, I, I didn't listen to the criticism, and um, all from my heart and soul and my intuition, and nothing is impossible. And m my greatest joy in this is that my children, mm -hmm. and my son follows me on Instagram, and my daughter keeps up with me, my daughter's boyfriend keeps, it's just amazing. My children, my stepchildren, it's amazing. And the support and the love that I get from them. And they're watching me bring a dream come true to life. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, to me, is just one of the most, it's, it's just an amazing thing for me, for them to be witnessing this. Um, but, um, but yes, if, and, like I said, I I never knew I had this in me. And all of these years later, through everything I went through, here it is. And if you have it inside of you, let it out. Let it out. You can do it. If you have a passion, if you always wanted to do something, start to do it. And it's not going to happen overnight. This is, for me, this is almost four years in the making. Mm -hmm. This is daily sharing of my work and getting myself out there and you know some days feeling like oh, what am I doing you know is anybody even out there listening but I kept my best foot forward and I kept at it and I I let I, I just let that fire go and and here it is so yes do it <laughs> I let it out, let it out. <laughs> I, what I what I love about this message is it is giving everybody permission to say here's yes. what I crave and it may not fit in with what society or my tribe or my culture wants me to do but it's who I am and exactly. that there are so many um, facets to who we are like a diamond right it has all those different edges to it and that you, you get to be more than one. Um, and I, 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 I wonder, and I, I'm wondering if, you, if you've heard this from some of your fans, in, is that when we deny the darkness inside of us, I think we find we are angrier. We face depression. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering if you've also had feedback like that, that this has helped other people go into their own like inner power and, and, and again when we say darkness we're not talking evil we're just talking to that unexplored place split yeah, place within us excuse me right 
Yes, I have. I've received responses how it's just helped them so much. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're right. It's not. It's not. It's not an evil darkness. We all have darknesses in us, and sometimes if we don't deal with them, it comes out in other ways. And I have to say, some of what you write is, like, I just want to say it to somebody on the street sometimes. One of them is, um, I'm not just the dark home, darling. I'm the whole haunted bookshop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to use that as a one-liner somewhere, and I don't know where, but, you know, that may come out of my mouth at some point. There's there's no telling. Um, I and, and there's something about your writing, and I think it might even be, how short it is. Um, another one that I that I love. Um, he's the wildfire to my wild flower, the inhale to my exhale, the confession to my sin. And when you find the beast who unleashes your flame, your soul will welcome home its twin. Mm-hmm. Did this change who you are, like in love relationships, is or what you were looking for in a relationship? It has. Okay. In, in powerful, positive ways, I'm assuming. In a very powerful, positive way. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. The, the woman I was mm-hmm. is not the, the woman that I am any, any longer. And that, and that is a really good thing for me. It was it, a new awakening for me, and that's what my writing did for me. So once I laid it all out, I, I learned I learned more about myself in these last four years of putting pen to paper and letting it all out. Now I truly understand when people say, write it, put it in a journal, get your thoughts on paper, get those inner thoughts out. Because I learned so much more about myself in these four years than I've known in my entire life. And yet I always knew there was something in me that I was meant to do. I knew that. And I believe right here and right now, this is, this is it. This is what I was meant to do. So it, it, it's fascinating because what you're talking about is finding your soul's craving and, and following it, embracing it and following it. You're talking about the power of finding our voice. And, and what I love about this is all those things are true but you do it in such a unique way. Instead of following a journaling path or here's what I'm thinking today or here's what I'm worried about, you it emerges from you in myth and metaphor. Um, and you talk about it just emerging from you. So you do you are you able to like sit down and today I'm gonna write from ten to two or like how does how does this happen? No, no specific time. It just I just kind of feel it. I feel mm-hmm. it kind of stirs within me, and I'm like, oh, it's time to write. It's time to sit down. And if I don't, mm-hmm. if I go a couple of days without doing it, that voice inside tells me it's time to sit down and do it. It needs to, now that it's come out and been unleashed, I need to do it. So it's almost like this. Um this inner powerful voice that says I know who you truly are and I know what you truly want and what you're good at and I'm going to help you do that so I know we talk about this as sort of like the darkness of it but the the beauty of you finding your voice and being able to use that is amazing have other and I'm not this in real life I'm uh, like in real life Mm -hmm. I'm not a social person I very I love my solitude Mm-hmm. I don't do well with small talk and all, you know, I'm very shy by nature. To be in front of people is difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Yet, when I sit down and it's just me and my words, it just, it all comes out. I don't know if I could mm-hmm. sit comfortably in front of a room of people and talk so openly as I do in my writing. Well, you're doing great right now, talking about yourself and being open about it. And, of course, radio is a little bit different, right? 
Um, oh, and if you've just joined me, this is the Dr. Lisa Show here on KUHS Denver, the stream. You can find us at KUHS.com, or you can tune in to the Dr. Lisa Show on Facebook Live and comment. I'd love, I know that she has a following, and Marie has a following. If you are one of her um, fans, jump on Facebook, the Dr. Lisa Show, and uh, share your thoughts on this. Because where I want to go, and I'm, I'm very conscious of time. Do you have a few more minutes to share? I, I do. Okay. So I, many of us, let me see if I can frame this without talking too much. Many of us as women, and I know men did too, but especially women, grew up being hush. Be nice. Oh, yeah. Be quiet. Mm -hmm. Be ladylike. Be, don't be like that. I mean, you just... Don't be so passionate. Don't be so enthusiastic. I was told um, not to laugh so hard, um, that I moved my mouth too much when I talked. I mean, all these things that I was told, mm -hmm. quiet, quiet, quiet. I'm wondering if what I have found with women is when we discover our voice, we can stop yelling, right? Because sometimes when, you, when you're hushed, you end up yelling. And yelling is completely ineffective in, in most situations. You, this is like you've learned to whisper powerfully. Um, and, and I'm wondering if you can talk about if that makes sense to you. And if, you, if, if, you're helping, if you find that you're helping other women do that. Like have that powerful, quiet whisper that, that can scare grown men. Yes. So I did grow up that way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to upset anyone who may be listening or offend anybody, okay. but yes, I grew up in a time where, you know, it was back 70s and 80s mm -hmm. and Strict no nonsense um, adults in my life mm -hmm. who, you know, you were to be seen but not heard. We are going to act a certain way. You're not going to cry. You're not going to have this emotional outburst. Uh, we're just not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to deal with that in other ways that just were not healthy. Um, but at the same time, as a child, I spent a great deal of time, you know, it was summertime, go out, go play. I was in the woods all the time. I, was I had imaginary friends, and I was always out in the woods creating my own little worlds. And of course, you know, it was, you know, you got, I got made fun of for that, and what are you doing, and who are you talking to, and... You know, so, <laughs> so yes, I, for a long time, felt like I didn't have a voice in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. And then I, as I grew up, I tried to find ways to deal with that, which wasn't always the best way in dealing with that. And at the same time, I was surrounding myself with people, including intimate partners, who felt that they could be my voice or they were mm -hmm. going to be my voice and this is how we're going to do things. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, I just said, no, this is not how my story is going to end. And that also changed when I had children and became a mother and looking at what I wanted for them and how I wanted that to be different, especially for my own daughter. And so, yes, and, and you're right, it did. Having to silence myself when I felt pushed into a corner or in a situation where that I needed to get out of, 
yeah, I felt like I needed to yell, which was completely ineffective, or be angry. It was all of those things that I had pushed down, my voice that had been pushed down. You know, I, I, I wrote a poem about that. Oh. I wish I had it, and I don't. It's about what happens to girls who, or to women when you try to silence their voice or their thoughts. Eventually, when they come out, you better be careful because they're going to come out. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I put it, you know, I compared it to, you know, the sea witches and the sirens, you know. Um, but, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that so much, like, even some of your, your short ones. Um, Beware the girl with onyx eyes and sapphire skies, for she has the spirit of a raven and the fairy godmother keeping watch over both of them. And so over and over again, what I, what I find is that you, through myth, through metaphor, through this eloquent use of, of language, are inspiring women to, to find that voice. And it's soft. You're, you're not yelling in, in any of these. And there's definitely poetry that, that yells at us, right? That tells us how bad things are and what we have to do to change it. And, and yours is much more go into yourself and see who's there. And it, and it might be Cinderella, it might, or it might be pearls and, and white tablecloths and, and lace. It might be, this Absolutely. isn't, right? It's just that your yes. message is go into yourself, right? Absolutely, right. go into yourself, right? yes. Yeah, and you, you found this. I wanna read one more. Her angels came with sweeping, sweeping wings steeped in shades of black with dusky, lacy corset gowns flowing from their backs. You, you remind me a little of um, the poetry we see in Alice in Wonderland, right? It just, yeah. it turns your head. So I know we're, we're short on time. Do you have another poem, one more, you'd like to read for us, one of your favorites? I'm gonna read this one. This is probably, I wanna say, maybe the first poem I ever wrote or ever posted out on social wow. media. Wow, okay. And it's, and some little girls have vintage souls where black butterflies dance and wild orchids grow. And I think that those little girls mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, shouldn't be silenced, shouldn't be hushed. I think that they should be able to dance with those wild orchids mm -hmm. and with their black butterflies um, and have a voice. And have a voice. So tell everybody how to find you um, um, and Will, Will, thank you for posting on Facebook. I'm glad you're enjoying this conversation. And, and he's saying congratulations to you. How do people, I mean, I found you on Facebook, but how do people find you and read your poetry? And tell us about that and where we're gonna find your book. So I'm on pretty much every social media outlet. I am on Facebook, mm -hmm. I am on Instagram, I am on Pinterest, and I am on Twitter. You okay. can Google me, find my work, and like I said, the book will be released, my first book, because I do already have a second book brewing, but awesome. let's get through the first book first. Absolutely. It will be uh, released in early November, mm -hmm. and that should be available. Uh, I don't know too many details yet. It will be out on Amazon, okay. and um, there will be paperback versions, I believe, and, um, Maybe turn and other versions, but there yeah. will be, yes, there will be absolutely more details, and I will be, me and Jay and, um, and 300's uh, South Media Group will be pumping all of that out, so, and yeah. You're, and you're more than welcome to come back on, and even if it's just for like a short bit to say it's launched and I'm going to read you five or six poems. I would love that. Yeah, I think You've that would be been lovely. wonderful. You've just been amazing. Oh, this is Thank this is so fun, and I um, I I 
I didn't realize, I mean, I, I knew I'd read your poetry, but I didn't realize we had that connection about the importance of the dark, of, of, and that the dark isn't evil, that the, the dark is what shows off, right? Um, again, you can only see the stars in the dark of the night, and the darker it is, the more they shine. So, yeah. Emma Marie, so I know you have to go. Thank you so much for being with Thank me, so much, and Lisa. we will we will chat soon. I think we're going to be BFFs from this point on. Yes, I think so. Okay, <laughs> all right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh huh. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. So, if you just tuned in, you have been listening to the Dr. Elisa Show on KUHS Denver, the stream, and that was Anne Marie Eliezer. She's, her book is coming out. She is Magic and Midnight Lace, and we've read several of her poems. And here's here's where I want. I've got about ten minutes left to talk to you, and I maybe not. And I I want to just talk about ha take this time to kind of do a wrap of of what I feel she is doing and saying, and what I heard from her, and what I'm hoping you got, and the message. As you know, what I work with people on is living on the loose. And life on the loose to me is about finding, embracing, and living your soul's craving. And our soul's craving is deep inside us. There are hundreds of thousands of books on what to do with your life. And hundreds of thousands of programs that you can buy. Here I'll help you find what you're good at and what you should do and where you should go. And I believe, I sincerely believe, that that information is, is deep inside us and that we were given clues so we could find them. I've talked about those clues, your name, your Parsha, your astrological chart. Um, and, and it takes courage to find that. And I, I didn't ask her about that, but I think you could hear it. She basically came out of a closet. Um, maybe it wasn't as scary as some closets that people come out of, she came out of a closet and expressed this part of herself. She, she listened to what was in her and wrote it and shared it, and that takes courage. It's a way of coming out. And what I've discovered with so many people in 2020, since 2020, is, is that we're coming out, many of us, that we've had closets that maybe, again, some closets are a lot scarier to come out. The closet isn't scary, but coming out is a lot scarier for some people because of, of what that closet's about. But it's hard for all of us. It takes courage for all of us. As you know, I came out on, on international radio as somebody who did astrology and read crystal balls and channeled spirit guides. I came out. I'm learning to use my voice in different ways, which is just exciting and exhilarating and she did the same thing she I hope is inspiring you at some level to be that person then who understands that what is in you needs expression and when expressed often we get past our our fears we get past our depression our anger we realize perhaps that the tribe we have been bonded to is not the tribe that we can continue with. We know that there is something we're meant to do. And again, you know, I've talked about this. Maybe you're meant to be the, the person who walks people's dogs on the neighborhood or checks on your neighbors. It doesn't have to be something that sounds grand and fantastic, but it's something from you, something that lives inside you. And life on the loose is exactly that to me. It's where we find that part of ourselves. And it can be scary. The very first stories I ever wrote were ghost stories. And I remember reading them to my grandmother. And it's so funny, I remember this moment. I was in my um, one of my cousin's kitchens and there were women and they were cooking and my grandmother was there and I had written a ghost story and I, I read it. My grandmother turned around and said to me, can't you write about nicer things? And and I left the room. And later, not that long later, she said, "Why don't you read me your stories anymore?" And I thought, I I can't. I I 
I can't write about the things in the way you want me to write about them, so you'll approve of them. That's not my voice. I also want to tell you something you don't know about me, and that is in one of my early incarnations in my career. I actually took on a major oil company and sued them for sexual harassment and discrimination. And at that point in my life, I had been journaling and journaling and journaling and journaling and I used sketchbooks and I drew and I wrote and I thought and I, I wrote stories and poems and I, I often destroyed them um, because they, often they got destroyed, they got caught up in a flood but I had one left and I was um, in a courtroom at, as we're getting ready to deal with this lawsuit and the oil company demands to have me evaluated by a psychiatrist and she says she wants to see my journals and I only had one left and this was terrifying I won't tell you some of the details how I handled that but I will tell you that the end result of all of that was I stopped writing I stopped writing it wasn't safe again it wasn't safe to write since then, as you know, I've written one novel, The Way of the Well. I've written a leadership book, Pirate Wisdom, with a girlfriend. And I now have written my second novel. And I write my blogs every other week. Basically, you get a blog. And I have yet again discovered my voice. That is not light and fairy. It is not all you need is, is love and good intentions. It's not that. It is deeper and darker. It's me. And the book, the novel, is about women becoming the dark. And it stands as a bookend to my first book, which is about Miriam's well of light and keeping the light flowing in the world. And so Anne-Marie's poetry calls to me because I am one who hushed her voice more than once. And remember, listen to how I say that. Others didn't hush me. I hushed myself. I hushed myself to survive in certain situations, to be successful in certain situations, to get along at work. And then when my voice would start to emerge, I would sometimes know it was time to move on. If it was a choice between finding who I was and living my soul's craving and being able to speak it or staying hush, it was my choice and it was my choice to move on. When I talk about life on the loose, I'm not telling you that it's a pathway to, I don't know, fame and glory or wealth and fortune or adulation from, from the crowds. I'm telling you it's a way inward, where you live, where your voice lives, where your soul lives. And why else would you come to this planet if not to live that, if not to be your true self? whatever that is. And again, I'm not talking about being a narcissist. You've heard me say that your true self has obligations. It has a responsibility. Nobody comes here with a true self that says, be a rotten person, right? Do evil. Those are people who won't face their own inner darkness and accept who they are and deal with it and perhaps get help with it. And instead, they use it to harm others and harm the world. It's tricky, isn't it? Because sometimes we do believe that myth of it's good versus bad all the time. We see it. We see it in every TV show. We see it in every superhero show. And yet the world is so much more complex and beautiful and elegant. Look at any ecosystem. Remove that top predator, and the ecosystem dies. Remove the bottom of that ecosystem, the the animal that is consumed, that produces many babies, remove the bunnies, the ecosystem dies. Remove the eagle, the ecosystem dies. Remove the wolf or the shark, the ecosystem dies. Remove your inner voice and a part of your soul dies. I don't know if that's inspirational, if you want me to lend a, end on a happy note, so I will. You can express that. I want to have you leave this show 
and comment. Go to my website, go to my Facebook site, talk to me about what you got from the show because my hope is that I've ignited a renaissance of spirit, of spirit within you and inspired you. And what I wish for you until I'm here again in two weeks is please stay inspired. Have a good one.